Hello, today I have an Acer laptop. This is a 4830 series laptop. Uh, the model number is P4LJ0. This customer brought this in because it's very slow and I used it and confirmed that most of the issue was um, the computer waiting for the drive. So I recommended an SSD upgrade. So that's what we're going to do. On this model, fortunately, the SSD and RAM are just behind this panel, which is held in with one screw. So there's the hard drive, there's the RAM. This has one memory chip in there. It's got four gigs of RAM now. I'm going to see if I have, I think that's DDR2. I need to put my grounding strap on. PC3, four gigs, double-sided this one. I'm trying to get this computer or this customer upgraded on the cheap. Because it's a slightly older laptop, the goal is to not spend too much money on this. So that's what we're going to try to do. Now, say the connector is there, so there's like a pad in there that's holding it in. Get under here to pry. Yeah. Maybe I'll do both of those at the same time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I'm going to get those off of the little peg there. Oh, that was stuck in there. So on the end of the hard drive, there's a little tab that sticks inside of this, like a silicone rubber, or it might be nylon, I don't know. Um, so I needed to pry out from this side first, and I'll just disconnect this from the SATA connector. Okay. I'm going to clone this, so I'm going to pop the little cover off so that this will fit into my external hard drive adapter. I've got a few of these Samsung 870 Evo 250 gigabyte drives. Right, so both of these drives show up as the Sabrent Disk Dev USB. The customer's disk is here. It's actually a 300 gigabyte hard drive. My SSD is 250. So I'm going to have Partition Wizard copy this, and it will automatically resize the partitions. If I choose a disk, a target disk that's smaller, and in this case, this is our Sabre disk, and it's unallocated. One thing I've noticed with Partition Wizard is when I fit partitions to disk on a smaller disk, if there is a small partition at the end of the disk, it doesn't automatically fit it. So in this case, the original has a 500 megabyte, actually a 513 megabyte. So this, the disk just below, where it says disk six, you can see there are four partitions, but this is only proposing to make three. So I'm going to make room. I'm gonna click on this largest partition. Actually, I might change this system reserved one to 100 megabytes. And then I'll click on this one and slide it down. And we need to leave 513 megabytes free at the end. It's really hard to drag like that. So I might just change this to megabytes and go down. Actually, I'll go back up because we've got too much allocated here. That's all right. So I'll leave it It's close enough. I don't want to get too close. And now I'm going to manually copy that disk six the last partition over to the empty space on disk seven. And I'll just have this fill that space if I can. No, I guess I can't. Maybe I'll slide it up to the top and then I'll go and edit the size of this partition and resize. This will let me just fill in the space. So now that looks pretty close. So I'll apply that. It's 9.46 AM. See how fast this goes. That's well, not very fast at all.
Now, I'm going to put my grounding strap back on. So let's see, this is going to go in this way. Not sure where that wire was tucked. I guess just right in there. Okay. Okay, so that's in there. I've ordered a memory upgrade. I found a 4 gig DDR3 1333 um, sodium for 15 pounds on eBay. So I have to wait for a few days for that to arrive. But in the meantime, we can see how the SSD has impacted the performance and whether it even needs a memory upgrade. It's only got four gigs of RAM, so I do suspect it will benefit from a memory upgrade, but the SSD might be all that it really needed. Might as well give it some power. So this just booted right in to Windows with no issues. Yeah, this is actually much faster than I expected. It's not waiting for the disk anymore, so this is great. I think this computer can get away without a uh, memory upgrade. I mean, it always helps, but depending on what this customer is doing, I think he said Zoom meetings, browsing the internet, checking email, very basics. Hmm. I think that's the quality of the Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, so it's just wireless in. Let's plug in the Ethernet and see what happens. Because I could have waited for this to finish, but that's all. Let's try this again. Now we're connected to the network with Ethernet. Not quite pulling 200 megabits per second download today, but still pretty good. It's pretty reasonable. Okay, I'm going to run some Windows updates on this and wait for the RAM to arrive. Pop that in and give it back to the customer. So that was easy. Thanks for watching.